name's Nikki and I'd like to welcome you along to our program today. My family and I have been asked to welcome you to the program, but uh, we're stuck at home as we all are and so uh, we're welcoming you from our home today. My um, husband normally works from home so that's no change for us, but we are doing a lot of extra things from home as I'm sure you all are at the moment. Our home is also our school. And the best thing about house chores is they can be in your pyjamas! So sit back, relax, grab a hot drink and enjoy the program. Hi Livingston Church family, happy Easter to you all. What a lovely weekend it would have been for our Easter camp. Not only are we going to miss seeing you all today, but we would miss seeing all of our friends and families that we only catch up with once a year. But we can't complain. We're happy, we're healthy and we are safe. We also have our son Ben back with us from University in New South Wales. Good morning Livingston Church and happy Sabbath to you all. Isn't this a time to be alive, eh? Easter weekend is underway. I'm reunited with most of my family back here in Perth and unfortunately there's no basketball to watch at all. But in good news, I've had nothing but time to get on top of all of my uni assignments. Not sure about you guys, but it's been good for me. Uh, we hope that you all are able to attend church digitally today, just as happy as you always do. Have a great one, Livingston. And I'd like to send a happy birthday shout out to everyone that's had birthdays so far in April. We're really sorry that we're not um, there to give you a personal birthday greeting, but we hope you've had a great day on your birthday no matter what you did. So our birthdays this month have been Neil, Steve and Eloise on the first. On the second was little Levi and little Charlie. On the third was Lisa, happy birthday. Seventh was Laura. Eighth was Killian, and I saw you on Facebook, Killian, up on top of the car waving at your grandma and grandpa as they went by to wish you a happy birthday. Abigail was on the ninth, Rhea on the tenth, and you did a great job of the welcome last week, Rhea. And Carly, George, and Michelle on the eleventh, which is today. Happy birthday. Welcome to our Livingston Easter digital service. Sit back, relax. Please don't forget to buckle your seatbelts low, tight and throughout the entire flight. And we pray that you will receive a wonderful blessing today from today's service. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Good morning, Livingston. Yes, it's Pastor Andrew here, giving you an Easter message all the way from my parents' house in New South Wales. I can't be in Perth at the moment. Can you do this? Kids, get your parents to stand up. Their arms need to be like this. Your hand is not allowed to go lower than your shoulder, than here, okay? You hold it all the way up. Are you standing up? Get them up. Come on, Mum and Dad, get out of your chair. Okay, that's better. Okay, so why am I doing this at Easter time? Because that's what Jesus did. That's what Easter is all about. Except for his hands were like this. His feet were together a bit closer. And he was on a cross. So I've got a challenge for you. For the kids, maybe a little bit later, I want you to get your parents to stand up like this. And you too. Put your arms up, your hands can't go lower than your shoulders. And I want you to see who can do it for the longest time. And whoever does that wins, okay? I don't know that Jesus was a winner when he did that because everyone laughed thinking he was a loser because he died. But that makes us winners. So just for a bit of fun, I want you to do that. And when it starts to really hurt in your arms, I want you to think, what was Jesus thinking when it was hurting him? And see who can do it for the longest. I can't do it for very long. Right, so I'm giving you this message from Easter from over in New South Wales, my mum and dad's house. It's nice and fancy here, at least in this front lounge room. But you're in your lounge room and you're in your, you might be in your car, you might, I'm not sure where you are today. But wherever it is that you're celebrating Easter, I hope you're having a really good time. I went shopping just earlier, um, yesterday, and I discovered that the shelves at the shops are really, really empty particularly the toilet paper aisle for some reason. I found the streets when I'm driving. I had to drive down to Sydney to pick my sister up from New Zealand and the roads, were, except for some big trucks, were pretty empty. It was kind of really cool. 
And the more I thought about it, church today is empty. The schools at the moment are empty. But I found another thing that's empty. And it's in, in the this, this story in Luke chapter 24, verse 1. It says, Very early on the first day of the week, at dawn, the women came to the tomb, bringing the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the entrance of the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. The tomb, just like the schools and just like the churches and just like the aisles at your supermarket, the tomb was empty. And that's what it's all about at Easter time. Jesus died on the cross. And then he was laid in the tomb. But then he rose again. That is the message of Easter that I want to give you today. The story that Jesus died for you, and better than that, he rose again so that we can all be winners with him. I think that's the best message ever for Easter. I hope you're enjoying having Easter at your place or wherever it is that you are. And I also want to make sure that you test out what Jesus did, because after about five minutes, it really starts to hurt. But I hope you have lots of fun, and God bless on this Easter Sabbath morning. See ya. Take a moment to think about the changes that occurred last century. Radio, television, antibiotics, motor vehicles, and the internet, to name but a few. In fact, from World War I to World War II, we saw some of the most contrasting changes as Allied forces transitioned from cavalry units to fighter jets, all in the space of 21 years. Fast forward 80 years, we live in a vastly different world. Technology has multiplied a thousandfold. Personal computers, smartphones, instant communication with anyone across the globe. So how do these changes relate to our mission to be disciple makers? For the past 15 years, Hope Channel has broadcast into living rooms around the world. From Hobart to Honiara, Port Moresby to Portugal. That's 45 countries in dozens of languages. But to go further, we need to do things differently. Now we're going beyond the living room TV. Using the latest technologies, we can begin new conversations that connect people to a living God and a loving church. So how are we doing this? By advertising on social media, we're reaching billions of people in their homes, in their cars, on trains, in buses, and even in boats. Hope Channel has launched a mobile app for your phone so you can watch Christian television in multiple languages wherever you go. We're developing new Bible studies and online resources to equip you in your ministry. We're creating digital discipleship journeys that connect the seeker to Christ and the church. In just one weekend, 500 people signed up through Facebook and instantly received their first Bible study. We're now designing Instagram mini courses to introduce a younger demographic to Jesus. These may be your children or your grandchildren. So Hope Channel has to be in this space. We've taken a huge leap of faith. We need your help and support so we can create digital resources. Jesus said that the gospel will go to the whole world and then he will come. To make that happen, we need you. Your time and money can help us create transmedia content that will reach your relatives and friends in every tribe, language and people. So let's work together. Our mission is to support yours. Hey everyone, it's Ryan here. I hope you're enjoying Livingston's digital church service so far. I'm back for another week with this segment of songs I've been listening to in Spotify and wanted to share with you. First up is Image of Love by City Point Live. For those who haven't heard of them, they are an international church similar to Hillsong. They've got a huge music arm and make their own albums and songs. I enjoyed Image of Love because it's really catchy and it just slowly builds, but then becomes really big as it starts to get driving. In particular, I like the lyric, heaven walked among us through the dirt and through the dust, the image of love, glory sent from above, which I think is the chorus. For me, it just gives me this sense of God wanting to be with us and how Jesus was so real where he walked through the dirt and through the dust while he was on earth. 
Next up, all-time favorite band, Third Day, saw them live. It was amazing. This song, Thief, on their Chronology album, which is a remastered version. I loved the previous version, and this one's even better. It's just absolutely huge. I love Third Day songs because there's often a story being told throughout them, and in this one, um, or Easter, it portrays the story of Jesus on the cross as he was crucified, and he is talking with the thieves on either side of him. And it, I just love it because even in one of his darkest moments, he was still giving them peace, saying, I will be with you in paradise. Following that is Power of the Cross, a medley combined with When I Surveyed the Wondrous Cross by Keith and Kristen Getty. Um, bit of an older song, but I love the composition and lots of different harmonies and dis- different instruments coming in and out throughout the song. And this one holds a bit of a place in my heart because before I joined Livingston, I was actually a mentor and guitarist for a school choir that went touring interstate. And we used to play this song, so it always brings back lots of feels when I listen to it. Next up is Isn't He? This Jesus by Natalie Grant and Belonging Co, a collaboration and single from them. I wanted to share this song because I really like how it focuses on worshipping Jesus. And it covers so many of the different qualities of why Jesus is Lord and how he alone should be praised and honoured. And rounding out my Easter playlist for this week is Nailed to the Cross by Wren Collective. A bit of a contrast to the other songs, um, and I don't mind a bit of banjo here and there. Uh, One of the lyrics that really spoke to me was, when I stand before the throne at last, his blood will plead my innocence, and I will worship him with holy hands and raise the song that never ends. And that really spoke to me. But I urge you to have a listen and see what kind of words it speaks to you and the kind of feelings that that invokes. So, yeah, that's my list for this week. I will put the Spotify playlist as a comment below the Livingston Church Facebook um, video, which you're watching. Or if you're on one of the other services, I'll try and get a link out there. And for anyone who does have me on Facebook, um, send me a link with any songs that you've been listening to and they might feature in here but I'll definitely check them out. So yeah, enjoy. Do you know that you can return tithe, give offerings, and make other charitable contributions from the comfort of your home or wherever you are? eGiving is a website and app developed by the Seventh-day Adventist Church to help you return God's tithe and give offerings. Let's get started and see how it works. To begin, search for eGiving on the App Store if you have an iPhone or on the Google Play Store if you are using an Android device. Once downloaded, open the eGiving app. Tap Next to move through the introductory slides. Then tap Done. At the Welcome screen, tap the flag and select your country. Then enter your mobile number and tap Login. You'll be sent a code via SMS. Enter it and tap Verify. Then enter your email address and tap Confirm. And enter the details. Tap OK to dismiss the message on your screen. You'll be sent an email with a verification code in it. Open your email, note the code, type it into the app, and tap Verify. Next, choose your preferred security method, then tap OK. eGiving uses your location to help find your local church. A window will pop up asking you to choose your preferred location privacy settings. Simply select the option you are most comfortable with. If you can't find your church in the list, tap the search bar at the top of your screen. Then enter the name of your church and tap the search button. We are going to return tithe. To do this, press the return button. Then tap the line underneath Amount and Payment Options. Enter your amount, tap outside the box, and press Confirm Gift. 
we are also going to give offerings to the local church budget. In the top right of your screen, tap More Options. Swipe on the list until you find Local Church Budget and select it. As before, enter your amount and press Confirm Gift. Select your payment frequency. Under Payment Options, add a payment method. Fill out your details, then tap Add Card. Tap outside of the box to dismiss it. Then select the card. Review the transaction details and when you are ready, tap Finish Gift. Next, a confirmation screen will confirm that your contribution has been completed. You can also check your email inbox. The receipt should be available shortly after giving. It's useful to save the receipt for your own records. That's it. Thank you so much for your faithfulness and commitment to returning God's tithe and expressing thanksgiving through offerings. Greetings Church, good to see you. I'm Andrew Skegg, Senior Pastor Livingston Church and it's great to connect with you in this way even if we can't connect in the normal ways. Many of us would be, normally be at the WA Easter Camp or we'd be in a, some sort of church service but I'm glad that we can still remember the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ this weekend. So uh, before we think about uh, Easter, I'd just like to pray. Dear Lord, I just pray that as we reflect upon who you are and what you did on the Easter weekend, that you'll be with us and your spirit will bring this message into our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. And I want to talk today about the best of times and the worst of times. That classic opening from Dickens' Tale of Two Cities. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief, it was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light, it was the season of darkness, it was the spring of hope, it was the winter of despair. We had everything before us, we had nothing before us. And uh, I think that just sort of comes to mind at this time for us, you know, it's uh, a difficult time uh, and we'd say it's a time of difficulty but it's also a season of opportunity and I'd like us to think about that, what that means, a season of difficulty but a season of opportunity. Because there are some things that we can't do that we normally would want to do. Uh, think we know we'd lo love to get together. We'd love to congregate. Uh, many of us would be at the WA Easter camp on this weekend traditionally, and uh, we can't do those things. But it's a season of opportunity. It's a season for us to dig down deep to connect with our families. It's a season to uh, connect with people on a personal level, even though it's through electronic means or through the phone. It's a time to really renew our personal uh, Bible reading and our uh, family devotions. So there's just opportunities there. But as we think about Easter, um, it was also the best of times and the worst of times. Uh, triumph and tragedy. Of course, we start on the uh, what is often called Palm Sunday, the Sunday before the death of Jesus. And there are the crowds waving their palm branches. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And the crowds were cheering as Jesus entered into Jerusalem in that week. And yet, unfortunately, by the end of the week, things were not going so well. Uh, what shall I do with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked the crowd. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. And they said, all the louder, crucify him. That's from Mark chapter 15. So triumph and tragedy, the best of times and the worst of times. One crowd praising Jesus, the other crowd calling for his execution. And then we had loyalty and desertion. They're at the Last Supper. 
as Jesus is eating with his disciples and trying to counsel them about his kingdom and what he's doing. And he says at one point, you're all going to fall away from me. And Peter says, no, 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 no. Uh, even if I have to die with you, I shall never disown you. And all the others say the same. And so there's this bold promise, you know, we'll never disown you, Lord. And yet what happens with only a few hours uh, as the men come to uh, grab Jesus and arrest him? Everyone, it says in Mark 14, deserts him and flees. And then, of course, Judas in that very moment uh, comes to, with the, the sign of friendship, a kiss on the cheek. And Jesus says to him, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? The bitterest betrayal uh, by a close friend. You know, the, the sign of friendship becomes the sign of betrayal. And not too long after, there's Peter who vowed never to disown Jesus. And uh, one of the girls standing near where he was says, hey, you were one of those people with Jesus of Nazareth. And Peter denies it. He says, I don't know what you're talking about. Loyalty and desertion, tough times. And then, of course, as we look through the Jesus story at Easter, it's quite interesting because we see Jesus having the best of times and the worst of times. Uh, there are times when Jesus' normal, uh, cool, calm control just cracks. He's there in the Garden of Gethsemane, begging his disciples to support him and pray. And he sa it says in, uh, in Mark, Jesus began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. This is not the standard language we're used to from Jesus. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he says to them. Stay here and keep watch. Very strong language. And then Jesus goes and prays. And it says that he prays falling to the ground. It's not often depicted this way in pictures. You know, often you see that picture. There's Jesus sort of calmly praying against a log, but it, that's what it actually says in the scriptures. He fell to the ground and he prays and he's, if possible, that this hour might pass away. And it just shows you the pressure that Jesus was under spiritually, physically, mentally, because for three years, he'd been telling them from time to time, this is the plan. I will go to Jerusalem. I will face persecution and death. And he said that quite calmly. But when, as we say, push came to shove, even Jesus himself found it difficult and he's praying, Abba Father, everything is possible with you. Take this cup from me and yet not what I will, but what you will. And the pressure Jesus is under, uh, the despair that he's feeling. Of course, when he's on the cross, uh, sure, he's offering comfort. He's making sure his mother's looked after. But when the critical hour comes, he cries out in a loud voice saying, Aloy, Aloy, lama sabachthani which is Aramaic for, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, sure, he's praying a prayer. Uh, he's praying a psalm, Psalm 22. So even in the hour of death and anguish, when he feels his father's presence withdrawn and the weight of sin and, and, and the uh, persecutions of darkness are coming upon him, he's still turning to scripture. He's still trying to reach out to his father through scripture. But the words that he chooses are still quite shocking. Uh, they're words of faith, but they're also words of despair. You know, why have you forsaken me? Why am I in this predicament? It's tough times for Jesus. And yet uh, he also says there's times when he, he's just calm. He's just calm. You know, he, uh, there's these false charges in the trials and uh, he's saying, these, sorry, these false charges are coming against him. And the high priest in the end says, hey, are you going to say something? Are you going to answer these charges? You know, are you going to defend yourself? And Jesus just stays silent. It says he made no reply. Interesting, uh, because often, you know, when people say something false about us, it's a very natural tendency for us to react and say, no, that's not true. That's not fair. That's not how it is. And Jesus would have had every right. But despite his despair, there was also a resilience within himself, that he knew who he was and he knew what was truth and he didn't need to defend himself even in the face of false charges. The same when uh, he, uh, it, it goes on and you know, they say, well, are you the Messiah? Are you the blessed one? And he finally speaks and he says, I am and you will see the Son of Man. 
uh, in the place of power and glory coming on the clouds of heaven. And that basically sealed his fate as far as the Sanhedrin. They weren't happy, but he, he was confident, even in the face of all the despair and persecution that he'd faced. He, he, he was confident in who he was, and he was happy to say it. Uh, when he faces Pilate, the same thing. My kingdom is not of this world, he says to Pilate. And Pilate says, so are you a king? And here he is facing the man that can order his execution, and yet he's confident. He has resilience in this situation. He says, well, you say I'm a king. I was born and I came into this world to testify to the truth. And uh, he's talking about, you know, the truth. And, and Pilate, of course, says, well, what is truth? You know, what's all that about? But even at that point, you know, Pilate is impressed with Jesus' resilience and tries to release him, but the crowd hounds him down. And then finally, when it's all said and done, it says in John chapter 19, Jesus says just before he dies, it is finished. And he bows his head and the breath goes out of him. He gives up his spirit, it says in John chapter 19. It is finished. So Jesus has this resilience and he sees his mission through to the end. So as we think about this at Easter, what can we learn from all this? Well, it is the best of times and the worst of times. And the good news is from these stories that when we are weak, Jesus is strong. When we are weak, Jesus is strong. The times when the disciples fell away, when things went bad, Jesus ultimately was strong. And the good news is that Jesus' strength covers our weakness. Isn't that fantastic? Jesus' strength covers our weakness. There's that fantastic verse in 2 Corinthians 5. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, that in him we might become the righteousness of God. What we call the great exchange. So Jesus' strength covers our weakness. And uh, in Christ, we can have that assurance that we can be saved, our sins can be washed away, and we can be clean and new and have the promise of eternal life. And lastly, I think we can learn that Jesus took his weakness to his father and processed that weakness. And because of that, he was able to stand strong. And so there might be times where we're feeling overwhelmed, where we're feeling weak, where we're feeling like Jesus, that you know, things are just too much. We need to take that to the father like he did on that Easter weekend. And the Father can renew our strength, our sense of identity, and our sense of purpose, and we can stand strong. So God bless you this Easter, where you're having the best of times or the worst of times, or a bit of both. And remember, Jesus died for you, and I encourage you to live for him. God bless you. It's been great to reflect on what Easter means. Uh, not only myself, but our whole church family. And I hope that you can reflect on what Easter means to you. Let's pray. Dear Lord, as we meet this Easter weekend, we do think of your death and resurrection for us. We rejoice in it. And we pray, Lord, that in this difficult time, that we'll remember your victory and your presence to be with us always. Bless our church family and the people we wish to bless in our community. In Jesus' name, amen. just like to finish off by sharing with you that really special verse in John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. God, God bless, bless and, and happy, happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you can tune in again next week. Have a great afternoon doing all the exciting things you can do at home. See you when we see you.